All right. Well, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are joining us from. Uh, I want to welcome you to special edition of the uh, Beyond Compliance webinar and podcast series. My name is Brian Sharp with Safety Chain Software, and uh, I'll be the uh, the MC and the host here today for uh, a really exciting uh, edition here. Uh, as uh, some of you who have been fo following us and joining us on these, this series, uh, we get an opportunity uh, every few months or so to uh, to kind of shift gears and and share a story. And uh, this month we're going to be sharing a success story from uh, a customer of ours, Beaver Street Fisheries, who's been with uh, Safety Chain now for for about uh, five, four over four years now. And uh, a really interesting story, one we've been wanting to to tell because it has a a couple of nice twists that we don't always get into. One is we're going to talk a little bit about supplier management more than than we have in the past on these series. Uh, and in a really complex environment, but also uh, really take this through the lens uh, of a different area, kind of an IT-led um, approach and a very hands-on approach at that um, from the customer. So I think this is a cool story. It's a customer that uh, we've learned a lot from, has been a really great partner and helped us become, uh, frankly, a better company and, and build a better product. So uh, so we're excited to have you join us. and. And, uh, and hear their story. And that's the idea here today is whether you're using Safety Chain or not, considering us, um, you know, the idea here is you're going to hear a story from somebody who's, who's done it, who's doing it, and uh, an opportunity to hopefully uh, apply some lessons and, and uh, learn from what they've done successfully. Um, if you're joining us for the first time, we appreciate you being here. And like I mentioned, this is a bit of a, a special edition as we, we share a customer story, but we, uh, we do have a full series uh, that we do around beyond compliance, and, and the idea here is to just continue to add value to our to our community and make sure that we're sharing what's happening in terms of trends and technologies and strategies um, that you can apply to your your companies in the the food manufacturing space. So we're we're glad you're here and appreciate you all uh, carving out some time in your very busy schedules to uh, to check this out. Uh, obviously, today we're talking about Safety Chain and, and how that's worked with uh, Beaver Street to, to provide some, some success. Uh, and we're gonna talk probably mostly today about supplier compliance, uh, but we are a end-to-end -end platform uh, for food quality management that covers really everything from receiving to ship out. So whether it's food safety, food quality, obviously the supplier piece that we're gonna talk about today and a lot more, uh, we'd love to share more about uh, how this might apply to your operations, helping you improve some of that productivity and profitability while still maintaining compliance, which is uh, important for all of us. Uh, so before we get started, I think uh, just a couple of things to note and a couple of housekeeping items. So one is we try and keep this pretty conversational. Uh, we've prepared some slides ahead, uh, kind of with a, an interview uh, I was able to do with Scott to kind of get the, the high level points so that you have something to take away and something to follow. But overall, this is just meant to be a very um, casual conversation and, and kind of share their story. Um, do encourage questions. So if you have questions, you have the little question box as usual, feel free to uh, fire those off and we'll monitor those. If we don't have time, uh, or if they're a little too specific, we'll take those offline. Um, but uh, definitely encourage questions for sure. Uh, the first and probably the most common question is, are we recording? And yes, we are recording and we'll share a link to this afterward. Uh, that you can review or share with your your colleagues uh, as well. Uh, you'll also notice that only the panelists, so just myself um, and Scott and uh, Anne uh, on our team here are behind the scenes. Um, you'll just see us. So when you send us your questions, it's just coming to the to us here. And last but not least, we are in a webinar tool. Uh, so if you're having any audio issues, uh, you have the option to call in on your phone or on your uh, computer audio. So if one's not working, give the other a whirl. Uh, if not, use the chat box and uh, we'll try and give you some technical support behind the scenes um, as we work through it. So with that, today, as I mentioned, we're going to tell uh, an exciting success story, I think one that's still in the making, uh, about how Beaver Street Fisheries really transformed global supplier management uh, using technologies. And uh, I had reached out to, to Scott, who's just been a, a really great partner, I think a very innovative customer of ours. Um, as I mentioned, who has uh, you know pushed us to be better, and um, I think has done something really uh, exciting with our technology, and and I think done some wonderful things for uh, for their company. Um, 
Scott uh, is uh, for nine years now been the CIO at Beaver Street and has over 25 years working in the supply chain. So uh, a veteran of the industry, uh, also an educator of the industry, uh, as you'll see here at a number of colleges. You'll you'll also probably see him on the speaking circuit a little bit, uh, particularly down there in in the south and southeast. Um, and uh, obviously has a, a deep background, not just in, in the technology, but in, in all of the distribution uh, parts of their supply chain. So uh, so first, I'd like to welcome you, Scott, for make sure you can hear me okay. And, and uh, thanks for being here today. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Brian. So uh, I think what would be maybe helpful to provide a, a little bit of context for those that may not be as familiar with with Beaver Street here. Uh, can you just give us a, a quick background about uh, you know who you guys are, what you're working with, and I think I've got another slide that kind of touches on some of the some of the brands for you guys. Sure. So Beaver Street Fisheries, 60 year old privately held company, started out in World War II. Our Founder came over from Europe. His family started selling seafood out of the back of a pickup truck, <laughs> and it's grown to over a close to a $600 million company today, and specializing in frozen seafood. We distribute across North America, and we sell to two types of markets. We sell retail, so if you're, well, Walmart obviously is our our largest retail customer, but in the Southeast, mm -hmm. Winn Dixie, Super Value, some of those types, Aldi. But we're also big into the food service side, the U.S. food, Cisco, um, Reinhardt. So those we'll, we'll ship into the food service companies who then in turn will ship into restaurants or wherever their distribution networks take them. Overall, we, we bring in about close to 2,500 containers of seafood. 80% of that's imported. Most of it's okay. coming out of Asia. So each year, our challenge becomes, how do you manage? We probably have close to 400 different vendors across, or let's just say outside the United States. We have about mm -hmm. close to right around 2,000 vendors overall. And to us, the vendor is not just someone who buys seafood from. It could be, you know, staples, the person we buy our office supplies from and everything in between. So right. for us to, when we were kind of looking at, what do we do and how do we get bigger and better because it's food obviously safety is at the top of everyone's mind our customers expect it from us so we have two different components of what we sell so seafood being seafood one would be just the quality when we buy grouper or mahi isn't really grouper or mahi so we got the quality inspection piece of it are we buying exactly what we expect and is it the right product then we just have, I'm just going to call it like compliance. Mm -hmm. So because it's food and because it's food and because it's imported, we have to deal with many different government agencies, USDA, FDA, USDC, Department of Agriculture. Just, it, the list is quite, <laughs> it expands almost weekly, really. <laughs> right. And then if you throw tariff on top of that, you know, yeah. now it's like, oh, based on species and based on the country it comes from, we even have more requirements of what we have to be able to track right. at vendor level almost. So that kind of gives you an idea of the complexity of what we do. No, I think I think that's perfect. I and I don't even think I realized the the number of, of vendors you were you were working with. I knew it was com complicated for sure. Uh, and that eighty percent certainly adds uh another layer to it as well so that that's perfect i think you started to segue really nicely into this and my goal here today is to kind of take people almost through the the, the cadence right that that you go through as a vendor uh or a partner looking to figure out all right how are we going to solve this problem and use technology and and how we often will interact and and so the first thing is starting to figure out all right well you know what's what's the driver for this right why why uh, look at some new technology uh, you mentioned some of the, the core challenges you're facing with all these different vendors, and I think language is part of that and that sort of thing. Um, but maybe you could also talk to a little bit uh, to, to each of these, but the first one there was really interesting. I think the thing I found really fascinating, you're one of the, uh, one of the people that was definitely ahead of this whole blockchain conversation and, and really looking to find 
a way to digitize what you're doing, uh, particularly on the supplier side, that maybe hadn't been done before and, and starting there. So maybe you can talk through a few of the challenges you were looking to solve with technology. Well, you just go back maybe six or seven years ago, the requirements that we would get, and they were all going to be, you know, it's, it's very segmented supply chain, if you will, but Walmart would say, hey, we're going to need a certificate of whatever. We'll do an easy one. Certificate of liability that shows you have insurance. Right. And you need to post it on our platform, which is the flavor of the year, flavor of the month, whatever they were going through. So collect your documents and put them here and do it like this. And we would. And then Cisco would ask us that. And then customer C and then D, E, F, G. Mm. And each one had their own different solution. And none of the solutions talk, right? If, if right. we said, we're going to put our documents into, um, it, it really doesn't matter. Whichever one you put them into, odds are it will not transfer nicely. So you have to put a human in between the platforms that can one, collect it, and then two, make sure that the right documents are loaded into the right customer portals, if you will. Mm -hmm. So we were trying to find that one, how do we get our arms around? Do we have all the documents to begin with? Right. So the number of different types of suppliers in each supplier type. So like I said, seafood vendors or import seafood vendors actually are different than domestic seafood vendors as far as document compliance, what certificates or what paperwork we have to have, sure. which is different than our warehouse providers, which is different than transportation, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So we had to, you know, one of the interesting things we had to do is we had to kind of drop back and say, do we even have a handle on what all of these types are? and what's required and who's asking. So you mm -hmm. end up with a giant matrix of vendors, vendor types, documents, document types, expiration dates, a, whole, a lot of different attributes that go with these documents. And we really didn't have a way to see all that. Right. So we could be very, very good at making sure Walmart was happy with us and we could put a lot of man hours into making sure they were happy, but we were probably neglecting, you know, a smaller customer somewhere else who was, begging hmm. us for some information that we may or may not have. Sure, sure, that makes sense. And so on the import side, because it's the, the majority of our inventory, we have an entire team dedicated to communicating almost from, the, from want to receipt, that so we want to buy some stuff. There's a coordination effort, there's a lot of documents that go back and forth in both directions, mostly email. And when we first started down this journey, it was like, how do we capture that in such a way that we can actually harvest it, use it, and get it to where it's supposed to be? Can we categorize it? Right. And e you know, email being email, very free form. You can attach whatever you want and send it to whoever you want, For whatever sure. format you want. Yeah. And if you try to take that and harvest it and try to, you know, rationalize it and get it into a database, it's not so friendly. Great. Pretty difficult. That was and you, kind of yeah. what set us out on the journey. That makes sense. And you had uh, you had created like these classes, right? So not only do you have all these vendors, you'd started to to group them or tag them, right? I think you referred to them as classes. Is that right? Right. Right. And that was part of that was because when we started down, and it's kind of when we when we first got introduced to safety chain, it's almost like when you get introduced to anyone any any software really, they're going to ask you for your business rules. They're going to say, well, how many and what type of documents do you have? And just that question all by itself was, was overwhelming for us. We're like, sure. you know, we never stopped and thought about it. Right, right. And Makes so if you sense. try to, like, we, we ended up building a spreadsheet. When you start to, you know, build a catalog of all the types and all the different attributes of what goes with those types, and then you start to put them into these, vendor classes if you will and go wow look look at look at the complexity <laughs> of what we're trying to manage right how are we gonna what's the best way to get there really yeah i i appreciate you sharing that we we hear a, a lot of that i think I, I i was always impressed with with the vision you had to look beyond that right and figure out this kind of blockchain like approach or what's the first step towards that but the the caring about the small you know 
uh, customers as, as much as the large ones. It speaks a lot to how you guys run your business, and it's a it's a shared concern we hear a lot. But you add on these things like all you know all these different importers, and then the 40 different countries and the government agencies, and then you layer that onto tagging it through email. We can see how how challenging uh, of, a, of an environment that really was to to tackle. So. Um, one thing that we always notice in successful implementations is is kind of the care that the team takes ahead of time to think through, okay, what do we need to do internally? Uh, there's certainly a project aspect, but what do we need to do internally uh, to address or prepare for uh, making this transition or, or um, in, introducing this new technology? And I think there's a few things in our conversation you, you touched on. Maybe you can share a little bit about your, your thoughts there. Yeah, there's, you know, with any project, change management's always going to be on the top of the list. It's like, how many people are, you know, sign up every day to come to work and just change? Probably nobody. <laughs> right. So you have to overcome that first hurdle, which is, what if there was a way that we could actually collect, harvest, document, store, and share these things easier? Well, just that all by itself. We, we have a paper process for that. We're very good at handling paper. It's mm -hmm. how do you turn that into something that you really could catalog and share that and try not to use humans to do it. Mm -hmm. And we still haven't quite mastered that, but we realized, okay, we're going to have to, there has to be some wins here. And most of the requirements that we really truly, and we haven't, we're not there yet. These are on our journey, but it's really the transactional documents. Mm -hmm. So everything I described for, oh, we need all of these types of documents for these types of vendors, add transactional on top and it gets even more monumental. Sure. You know, the, the, the effort to manage becomes much more complex. Right. So as we, we really went to market to go find that transactional solution, like how do we, how do we capture and manage all of these transactional things, which really fast forward is, that's what blockchain is attempting to do. It's like, well, how do you get everyone in the supply chain to play nicely and share everything in a format that's shareable? Right. And all the way back to the pond, right? Like go all the way back to the guy who caught the fish. Because if you have holes in that, in your supply chain, i.e. blockchain, it's not a full story. So is it really truly valid at that point? Right. So that's kind of what led us down this path. And the very first piece of it, if you want to call it the easiest part, which still took us a while to accomplish, was, okay, let's, let's not focus on transactional. Let's just focus on getting our arms around the vendor level documents. Can we do that? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. No, I, I think that's, that's a and great that's kind point. Of how we... Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. I think we, we see that a lot where people get excited about technology and they, they want to kind of go from as I heard one person put it, from walking to, to uh, riding in a spaceship. And so um, I think, like you said, this is all part of that journey and, and getting that first step uh, was, was really critical. Um, and then finding the technology that fits that, but the partner that's gonna grow, I think is, is a big part of that, um, that direction. So as we look yeah, back well, at, you know, as go a, back, I'll point out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so th that last bullet's kind of important too because mm -hmm. the other thing that we figured out is that put the language barrier on top of it, but not all vendors are created equal. You mm -hmm. have very large, technically savvy vendors. You have every, and then everything all the way down to a guy who's probably a broker mm -hmm. and he's just buying and selling products. And he's, you know, it's a one or two man operation and they're not, they're not even able to keep up with it. So we, I don't think we've appreciated that going into the project either. Hmm. We're like, oh yeah, everyone's just going to play nicely and do what we ask them to do because we're who we are. <laughs> and it wasn't because right. they didn't want to, it's because they really didn't have the ability to accomplish it. Well, I appreciate that, and I think that's a big part. Sometimes you don't learn that lesson until uh, 
a little bit later when <laughs> it's a little bit more painful for sure. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's kind of why we wanted to share these stories, right? Because those are the types of lessons you don't you don't always hear about or get a chance to learn unless it is a hard way. And we're hoping that that helps some of you as you as you think through that. So they're not all created equal, and that partnership's important up front. Um, so it, as you you know, everyone uh, I, I think understands the value of technology and and how it can solve some of the problems that you were facing. Although yours are are kind of have a whole nother layer of complexity for a number of different reasons. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit about the the project itself, and these are some things both from I, I took from our team, and I think some our conversations with you and folks on your team. These were some items that stood out that that I think that that really showed uh, what impacted the success here. And uh, so I'll, I'll let you kind of share first um, your thoughts on on some or all of these here uh, in terms of the project success. Sure. So most of the projects, that, at least most of the successful projects that I've been involved with, I used to say we always used to like prototype. And then I was in a presentation once and I heard someone say that there's no such thing as a prototype. They're just small commits. You commit to it, you either do it or you don't do it. Hmm. Right? That's it doesn't work, turn it off. Right. Try something else. So part of it is, okay, we kind of know what we want to do but you got to match what we want to do to the technology's ability. So it was kind of that you got to show me how it's supposed to work in your world. Like how does this tool, if, if you really did want to go from walking to a spaceship, you're going to have to show me how the spaceship flies. You're going to have to give us an idea, <laughs> right. like where could we get to? Right. And from there we can back down and go, Oh, well, we don't have a space suit or I don't have whatever it is. Right. So we have to, we have to figure out what do we need to get first, in which order to get to where we want to get to, right? Mm -hmm. So that was part of it. So we kind of had to learn because we were going into uncharted territory. Like, what does what does this platform do differently than some of the other platforms we had been involved with? Because there's lots of there's platforms that can you can just store documents. We could do that in SharePoint if we wanted to. We could just go out there and say, here, create folders and just drop the stuff in and hit store. Yeah. Yep. But then it's, well, how do you catalog it? How do you alert when it's expired? How do you let the vendor do it himself if he's capable? How do other people access? So there were just lots of things. Mm -hmm. So as we kind of went through it, it was like, all right, let's 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 get the catalog built. We needed, and even there, we needed help with that. And that's kind of when we found out that, okay, when we approached Safety Chain, and we figured out like, okay, where we, we were trying to get on the spaceship and they were trying to stop us and said, you don't have a ticket, much less you have a spacesuit. So let's, <laughs> let's back up a little bit. Right. So as we did that, it was a learning curve on both sides, I think. So mm -hmm. part of it was, do you, let's look at your, this checklist or this catalog of documents that you have and is it realistic? And probably what we had was not realistic. It was, we were trying to take on too much. So we had to scale it back. Mm -hmm. So there was some back and forth and we had to get it to a place where it's like, could we identify and and just start with this, like the simplest thing we could get our arms around, which was we just took the import vendors and then we just took a subset of those and said, let's take the big vendors, the ones we work with on a consistent basis and they're very patient with us and they'll probably allow some failure and some struggles. And we just, we started down that path. And once we started with some, the momentum built on top of it and we were able to just trudge forward. Now the challenge was, you, you know, we couldn't interrupt our operation. We have to buy, import, right. and sell seafood. And if we're not selling seafood, then we're all unemployed, so it won't matter. <laughs> right. so we had to do it in a very delicate approach, right? We had to be able to say, okay, look, we're, we're starting to collect information. We actually had to supplement some of the, I'm going to just call it the operator. So we couldn't just walk into operation and say, hey, give me two people and let's let's load this, we had to do it on their behalf. Hmm. Or we had to work directly with the vendors, even though they talk to them every day, we actually worked with some of the vendors to kind of test and make sure it worked and do the things we thought it could do before we moved on and moved down the list of vendors. Mm -hmm. well, that, that makes but sense. You can't I mean, underestimate oh, sorry. that 
you said safety chain team, like bullet number four, there's a lot to be said with the commitment on both sides of the equation because we would have never got there by ourselves. I don't think safety chain would have got to the same place where we were at without the collaboration and just the, okay, let's see if we can't figure out how we're going to get there, whatever there is, and then to find those steps and jointly get there. That's, that's what happened. No, it's, that's great. And two things I, from the, from our side that I want to call out that I think you did, you did well is, is that feedback and that collaboration. I think, uh, I think you, you nailed it uh, for sure. And that's how we, we found the there, there, right. And it's still a journey, right. We still continue to, to improve and, and add oh, and yeah. deepen that. Uh, and then the other part though, I think that you did a, a great job on, and I, and I hope particularly this applies on the supplier management side is it's great to put in technology but that assumption uh, that that we that all them all, they're all going to welcome it and use it and and frankly know how to use it, um, the fact that you guys did some proactive work there, uh, I think was one of the great takeaways from this. And I think something everyone wants to keep in mind as you introduce technology that others need to touch, not just internally with your operators, but with your your vendors. So, um, so I think that was that was a, an important part of the the success here, and I think something we've seen that people have learned from and 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 um and uh, used uh the the first two i also want to touch on as well that we see a lot of success with is this it first approach and so the fact that you guys not only collaborated but you really took ownership and and you can't stop your operations and you learn the system and you you got very proficient in it and and uh are probably one of our our most advanced users uh, both you and your team and i think that really helped a lot and, uh, and how you're able to translate that uh, throughout the organization, or, or at least the people on your team that were using it. Uh, and the time taken to standardize, especially when you have multiple business units, uh, this usually becomes the biggest potential bottleneck. So, uh, so I think all of these things on here are extremely important. Uh, and I think a, a, an example of how you, know, you led your team here in a way that um, uh, really was beneficial. So, uh, so that's great. I don't know if you have anything else to add on the on the project side there. No, I think I think we've touched it. Okay, cool. So let's let's talk a little bit now uh, about the good stuff, right? So we've we've faced these challenges. You, you you make a selection. You talked a lot about the the ways to work with a vendor and make sure you're getting the most out of the the decision you made. And uh, I think it's it you know we want to share a little bit about what does that look like now. Uh, and I think the cool part about software and things like this is um, you're never finished, right? There's always an opportunity to keep tweaking and improving and adding. Um, but these are some of the things we've we've talked a little bit about. So um, maybe you could talk first just about the management of your suppliers, vendors, and and I think you also had uh, some interesting feedback on the on being ready for audits, which is nice too. Yeah. So one of the classics would you know one of those phrases that's out there but you, if you can't see it you can't manage it right you can't measure mm -hmm. it you don't know where you are how are you supposed to know if you're winning or losing you can't tell okay. so a big piece of the overall benefit really was just pure visibility it's like do we if you just ask a simple question do you have all of your insurance documents mm -hmm. well we can we can in a snap one couple clicks of a button and we can go, well, I can tell you who we don't have it from. Mm -hmm. And of the ones we have, I can tell you when they're going to expire. So you get this full visibility of, you know, what used to be in a file cabinet or used to be in somebody's email folder or used to be who knows where. Now we have it and we can see it proactively and we can react to it. So what now when you, before you might say, I'm supposed to have these documents annually, and some of the vendors just fell through the cracks. There were just too many for someone to follow up on on a consistent basis, and it might be April by the time we got them all, and the year's right. half over. Now, we're asking for those documents before they expire. We're letting the vendors put them in if they have that capability, or at least get them to us so we can get them in and satisfy almost like a score. It is a scorecard, but mm -hmm. it's almost a game. Like, can we get this in before the, you know, the light turns red? <laughs> right. So there's that piece of it. Because, and it's, it's the same way with our inventory, 
whenever auditors come in, so for any kind of inspection, GFS, that doesn't really matter who the inspectors are when they come in. If you can demonstrate that you have a solid process, they tend to ask less questions and they don't dig as much, right? Hmm. It's when they finally they hit blood somewhere and they're like, oh, let's go, let's go much deeper in this area. Right. right. So now it's much easier when they say, okay, we want to see a sample of whatever certification. It's very easy for us to just go, okay, well they're in a system, so just tell me which ones you want. They don't see you fumbling through drawers or running around the warehouse trying to find stuff. <laughs> it's right there at your fingertips. They ask a lot less questions. So just the ability to demonstrate that we have a process and it's followed and we're managing the documents, it's just the full visibility component. That's where the win came from. Now that that's great. I'm sure that takes a little bit of stress off of the of the team too. I I, I like how you've said that when you can demonstrate the process, the the technology, and we're we're hearing that from auditors now as well. Um, I think the other thing I, I love the way you describe the scorecarding because uh, there you know there is scorecarding in there and it's been a bit of an elusive I've heard it referred to as the uh, the supplier management unicorn uh, but it does exist and when you have a process uh, like you've built there uh, you really can uh, can see it and use it and it's a it's a really powerful uh, tool. Um, these are some of the the, the more uh, maybe tactical things um, that you know we've we've heard from you and your team in in some uh, some areas that have that have helped. Anything on here that you wanted to touch on that that I know your team's particularly proud of a of a couple of these these pieces as well. Is there anything uh, that you would want to call out here, Scott? Well, you know, like, and it was sort of a byproduct. We we started down the vendor management path, and one of the things on that earlier slide when we said, you know, show us what it can do. We're using the inspections that maybe some of your other customers are using for true inspections. We're mm -hmm. using it for preventive maintenance. So we set up our assets throughout our facilities and we're actually using tablets and we're inspecting whether daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly checks, all of our preventive maintenance is actually done. And it was a byproduct and those results Along with pictures and any kind of documentation that goes with the inspection, they're actually visible through that same dashboard. So along with the vendor management and the right. document, we're also doing our preventive maintenance. Same platform, same tools, same skill sets, if you will. No, that's great. Yeah, so be, being able to, I think you you put that perfectly. I heard another customer recently say the the, we set out to solve one problem and then we didn't realize we were going to solve other ones as well. And that was a another innovative way you guys have, have used the system uh, as well. Um, you, you talked a little bit about the scorecarding and, and analytics. I'm, th I'm curious from your standpoint as a leader in the company, um, just the, the decision making or the, just your access to the analytics and the, in the data, is that something that you're able to use? Do you share that with others throughout the company or, or, um, how, how has that helped you from, from a leadership role perspective? So it's, it's more of a, like I said earlier, it's sort of a proactive tool. Where we, you're looking for the ones who are not compliant or the ones that are missing critical documents. Mm -hmm. But there are certain, we have certain documents that are required, like our, we have a, a monthly HACCP meeting. And probably four or five times a year, we'll bring the actual, like our HACCP certification, our vendor compliance, if you will, the report card, based on the buyers. So you actually get down to the buyer level, whichever vendors they're managing, a report card that we do distribute. And we're, we're doing it, to, one, just to show compliance at, at that monthly meeting, but two, it's also, it's, it's that, it's kind of like, well, if you're, you know, in, expect what you inspect, Hmm. So by sharing it, it's better that it's being monitored, it's measured. We're not even the compliance department, right? We're, we're supposed right. to be fixing printers and emails, <laughs> but we own it, so we we can it. Right, right. Uh, that's great. And the the last thing I want to touch on that I thought was also a, a unique insight from you guys is so you've talked a little bit about being ready on on defense right so when the audits auditors come in and being able to demonstrate your processes and 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 the data and organization there but it's also allowed you to be a little bit more on offense with with your suppliers and i, I think if i recall is one of those things where you, you 
been able to hold them accountable a little bit better and and they they work a little harder or something along those lines could can you share how maybe it's impacted your relationship with your suppliers also well yeah so it's it's the same thing from analytics when you look at a vendor and you can see oh he's at 80 percent a lot of them care like wait how am i 80 percent we think we're 100 mm -hmm. <laughs> I did send you this document or whatever it is, fill in the blank. When we share that information back to them and some of them actually ask us, like, how are we doing? Like, really? That's great. we're not telling them, they're asking us. That's so great. So it's easy for us to just take a look and go, yeah, you're supposed to have 20 documents, we got 17. Or right now you're good, but I can see three are going to expire in 60 days. So if you want to get them over here, we'll, we'll get it updated. So we're, we're staying ahead of that curve. It used to be wait till it expires. Then right. go chase them down and see if you can get it. Exactly. Oh, that's great. You guys that are so really great. Yeah, that's a great precedent to set with them. The fact that they're asking about their score is 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 a, a great testament to that. So um, this this has been great, I, and I appreciate you sharing the insight. And I one of the things I always love to do, uh, Scott, when when we're lucky enough to have someone like you hang out with us for a few minutes. You've done this for a long time. You've had a lot of success, and and uh, there's probably folks that are checking this out that are trying to you know figure out where would I start what would I do so just curious as you look back kind of some key learnings these are a few things that I took from our conversation but uh, anything that you would share with with everybody who's on here uh, today just in terms of uh, the project in general part of it you know it's it's not so like there was two things here right one of them was like I said when we started the journey we had a very specific requirement and we needed to go solve a problem. We got, I'm going to just say like halfway into it and we figured out that this wasn't going to solve that problem, but it opened up some opportunities for other areas. So if we would have been so focused on the other thing, we would have just bailed on this project. We've never got to where we got to and we would still be probably searching for that other solution, which I don't think is in the marketplace yet. The transactional piece of it, Mm -hmm. But it's kind of that keep your eyes open so that you can be able to. And, and we're, I like to always say, like, hopefully, I hope our other vendors would say this. We like to partner with our vendors. So it's more like, how can we help each other, not how can you help me? Right, right. Absolutely. That partnership's uh, important on both sides for, for sure. Um, and you've talked a lot about the visibility today, which I think is is great. I love the you know if you can see it, you can manage it, and uh, uh, and and the team approach to change management. I think you guys really were that that I think that may be a bit understated, but a big part of the success there. I don't know if there's anything you would add to suggestions or advice to those that are maybe in an organization that wasn't as forward thinking or or open to to trying something different. Do you have any any suggestions or feedback for those folks? I, I still that one still goes back to the you're gonna have to to somehow demonstrate it. Like you're gonna have to set up a couple vendors and you're gonna have to show that it actually does what you think it's gonna do and mm -hmm. that there really is benefit. Naysayers are gonna always be naysayers <laughs> and there's always a better way. But they're not gonna help you find the better they're not gonna ever do it, right? There's no right. focus to change unless you help them see the benefits. I was, there's a cartoon that goes around where the little guys are at war with the spears and the guy comes up with a cannon and they're like, no, 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 we're too busy fighting the war. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's kind of the vision I always have. Like, yeah. I got to help you see like how this is going to benefit you. Yeah. And we have to be able to demonstrate it. No, that, that's a good point. I think we can all appreciate that one for sure. Um, it's close to home, I'm, I'm sure, for a few of us. So, well, listen, I, I think that is a, a good spot to to wrap things up there. And uh, so first, uh, we just want to thank you, Scott, and your team, uh, not just for making the time to to share the story, but just for being really a great partner. And as I've mentioned, uh, it's been a good journey. I think it's made us better. It's it's made our, our, uh, our product better. And I think everyone's going to benefit from that. Um, but also benefit from from the story you shared today. So uh, so thank you. We really appreciate you being here today. My pleasure.
Uh, for everybody else who's who's joined us, uh, thank you all for for making some time. Uh, I know there's some questions about you know actually seeing the software. Our goal today is is uh, not necessarily a show and tell, but really just to share this story. We think there's a lot of a lot of value in that. And uh, if it sounds like something that you want to learn more about, uh, we'll be following up with you individually so we can talk a little bit more about you know how it might apply to your particular uh, facilities. And uh, we'll be happy to set up. Uh, a demo uh, to do that uh, as well. We'll also be having our demo day, uh, I believe, later this week, and we'll we'll include a link to that when we have our uh, our follow up with the the slides and and recording here. But uh, want to thank all of you for for making some time to join us. And again, big thanks to to Beaver Street and uh, and Scott Lane and his team. Uh, and uh, look forward to speaking with uh, with all of you soon. Take care. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Scott.